an okay day for you so far? Yeah, it's uh, things are things are fine. Things are okay. You know, we're I'm in Utah, so I'm a, I think a little bit behind you time wise, but. You know, just trying to make sure that uh, this this election gets uh, respected and the results yeah. implemented, and you know that that's the focus right now. So, something I'm curious about as somebody like yourself who wears a lot of hats, but you're pretty much thought of as being in the political and governmental uh, stages and phases and spaces and all that. Is November the like peak season for you, like the craziest time of year every year? Every election cycle, yes, at least every two years. Uh, and then, so yeah, every two years, certainly. And, and between, between that, I guess, you know, you have special elections that pop up, you know, and, and busy seasons in Congress where you've got to be active. But, but November is, uh, is, is, yeah, that's, that's the, the busy time in politics, no doubt about it, especially if you're involved in electoral politics, if you're at all engaged in campaigns as a candidate, uh, in the media or a consultant, uh, November is, is super busy. So then the counter of that, when do you usually get to take a vacation at, at all? Is that July or August? I think it, you know, it's the big, the big vacations in politics come usually after, right after elections. Um, but in this situation where, uh, one of the, the candidates, you know, at the presidential level is contesting the outcome. Yeah. Uh, then that that ain't happening. So I, I think if and then, of course, you've got the pandemic. So it's not like people are traveling anyway. But I yeah. think it's, you know, I think I think people will take their vacations, their staycations, so to speak, uh, uh, once the president has, if he does ever acknowledge the yeah. outcome of the election right. or if when he's when he's gone. And then I, I think those who can will will take a little bit of time off. But the reality is for many who have been at hard at work on election stuff, um, given the pandemic and the other challenges that the country faces, um, you know, it, there won't be a lot of big, big vacations, I think, for people who have, um, uh, you know, people who certainly are Democrats, they're, they're going to need to get hard at, at work and in, in responding to some of the challenges that the country faces. So anyway, Trump is stealing our vacations. That's what's happening. <laughs> Well, unprecedented time in many, many ways. You just named a few of the reasons why. I've been trying to think lately, if there's a second crazier time in history than right now. Lately, my mind has been going to 9-11 in 2001. For you, is there a second craziest time in history? I think... Uh... I think 9/11 is is a is one that exists in our lifetimes, right? I mean, we we experienced that. Everyone knows, you know, what happened, or they can tell you where they were uh, if they were, you know, 10 years old or older, or maybe a little bit younger, where they were when 9/11, uh, when those attacks happened. Right. But uh, but you know, another in in our lifetime, I can't think of another time. I mean, I. Uh, I, I think before that it was sort of uh, uh, civil unrest and and um, conflict related to the Vietnam War probably would be uh, and then you know uh, I'm not sure b before that exactly but um, but but certainly this is the most divided uh, I think the country has been in in my lifetime without a doubt and and probably much longer than that probably you know, probably we're probably more divided now than, than we were during Vietnam, but I wasn't, you know, uh, old enough to, to assess that personally. So I could be wrong, but we're quite divided and it's, it's a, it's a concern. Sure. One of your major accomplishments, at least from where I stand is getting 600,000, 700,000, just a lot of votes when you ran for presidency in 2016. Seeing what's going on now, do you have any kind of hunger to run again as a third party candidate? Well, in, in 2016, I, I, I ran as an independent uh, trying to give conservatives an alternative to, uh, to Donald Trump. And that was a, a campaign, an election cycle where uh, both candidates from the major parties were perceived by the other side to be very polarizing. So Sure. There wasn't a great opportunity for unity, and, and I, I felt it necessary to, to stand on the right and give conservatives another, another option. 
Um, so that's what I did. You know, it was a, a brief campaign, three months, you know, very modest campaign. Uh, we were on the ballot in 13 states only, uh, and and we were registered as a write-in in another 30 or so. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you know, those write-ins weren't counted, but but the votes in the other, you know, 13 states, 12 or 13 states were. Um, but, you know, it was a unique experience. It was something that was necessary, I think, to begin our fight to my fight for uh, the, the Republic, uh, which we've continued over the last four years. Uh, you know, I, I look at our leadership now. I'm, I'm happy that, that Donald Trump has been defeated and, and that we'll now have a, a president who cares about all Americans and who will lead with, uh, with decency. Uh, and Joe Biden, I'm, I'm pleased with that. Um, I look at some of our other leadership in Congress and elsewhere, and, and uh, I think they leave a lot to be desired, frankly. I think the country needs more unifying leaders who are going to find solutions for major challenges we face rather than trying to divide people mm -hmm. uh, and, um, and, and tear the country apart for their own political gain. And, and so I think about running and pursuing office uh, again. Uh, I think it's likely that I, I will. Um, that day could be coming soon. I'm, I'm not sure yet, uh, but, uh, but that's something that I think about a lot. And in the meantime, I work, do my work with Stand Up for Public to try to unify, um, unify Americans from across the political spectrum and to try to um, you know, advance political reforms and, and defeat uh, leaders who are trying to harm the country. I personally as a writer i've had good dealings with fox news from the pr angle you know when i speak to their talent they're generally very nice respectable we keep it off politics we talk about music and sports and things that bring people together but i thought it was super interesting yesterday on fox news did you see neil cavuto do that cutaway during the trump thing? Yeah. <laughs> how did how do you feel about that i thought that was unbelievable that finally fox news has turned on him as well yeah, that, that was a, a very positive sign. I mean, look, Fox News has incredible influence over, uh, over voters on the right. I mean, there's just no other way to say it. I mean, it's, it really, if you're, if you're looking for change on the right, it happens, it's going to happen through Fox News. There's no other way. So I'm hopeful that Fox News, as I am for everyone who has participated in this, this failed Trump experiment, you know, I hope everyone... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. I mean, it was an experiment for many. Hey, let's see what can happen. Let's shake things up. And it's been quite a disaster. And so many Americans have even lost their lives or livelihoods for it. Sure. What, what Neil did. I mean, look, I know that Neil has been no fan of, of Donald Trump. That, that is the reality. He never has been. And I think Neil is a fundamentally uh, good man. And he did the right thing in that moment. And I hope more, I hope people uh, who watch Fox News and people who work with him as colleagues there will recognize uh, what he did as something good and, and support it and do the same if they're in the, if they're in that opportunity, if they have that opportunity. Sure. Do you have time for two quick questions and then you're a free man? Oh yeah, sure, sure. sure. So I know about your professional background. I know the many things you've accomplished and you've given great service to this country, to people in general, but what do you wish more people knew about you, the guy, Evan? Hmm. You know, I, I have to say, Darren, my, you know, I, uh, my entire life has, uh, aside from, uh, you know, a couple of years uh, here and there, my entire adult life has been working to serve the country. Um, I've sacrificed enormously personally to do it. You know, I spent tons of time away from my family when I was in CIA working undercover overseas. Uh, and then, you know, doing the work that I've done over the last four and a half years, you know, hasn't left much time for a personal life. Uh, and so I, I think, you know, a lot of people, um, you know, my, my work is, has been my life and, and I hope for that to change soon. And I, I think it will. Uh, but, you know, I think the reality is my work is, has been my life and, and my passion and my cause. And I've dedicated most of my adult life to serving the country. Uh, people know that though. Um, I love to spend time in the mountains. Uh, the mountains for me, you know, I live out here in Utah. Mm -hmm. And my, my ancestors uh, joined the, the Mormon church in the 1840s. 
and they were they lived in Maine and they were they were shipbuilders in Maine and uh, they were persecuted because of their religious beliefs along with other members of the church and so um, uh, of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and so they they fled the East Coast on foot and crossed the plains crossed the Rockies and eventually found home in these mountains they found found their home they found their freedom freedom from persecution in mm -hmm. these mountains and so now I spend a ton of time in, in, in the same mountains, almost 200 years later. And for me, they're, they're also a source of, of refuge and, and freedom. I, I, you know, during all of this trouble in the country, whether it's because of the pandemic or politics, you know, I've, I've tried to retreat to the inside the mountains and the mountaintops uh, at least you know, uh, once a week or so to, to reflect on what's happening, to clear my head and um, to be reminded of, of the sacrifices other, other people have made so that, that we can have the freedoms uh, and hopefully the justice in, in this country that, that, we, that we do or that we strive for. And so, you know, that's, that's a, huge, a huge hobby of mine is to go push myself in the mountains. I like to, you know, do 25, 35, miles a day um you know running hiking scrambling through the mountain and uh that's that's uh something that i uh, i enjoy very much wow that's a great answer right there and you've sort of answered this but my closer is usually any last words for the kids and some people just go go to my website is blank and other people actually impart wisdom it's up to you uh you're a very inspirational person from where i stand as somebody who works full-time as an investigator besides all the writing so evan uh any last words for the kids yeah look i i would say this you know my my early experience as a as an adult as a professional was with the Central Intelligence Agency and and uh, as you know I served undercover yes. uh, in, in the war on terror in in Asia in the Middle East in Africa and um, I met all kinds of people you know Americans and foreigners and uh, all kinds of people across the across the world with incredibly different backgrounds right. Um, and, and one thing I learned was that, um, that, that all humans have far more in common than they do in difference. And, and, I, and if that's true, and I've always believed this, we as Americans have far more in common than we do in difference. I mean, Darren, I look at your, like, what's behind you, you know, <laughs> in, in your home. Oh boy. And, you know, and look, there are there are so many things there that, you know, Americans who are conservatives or progressives or liberals or moderates or whatever they are, you know, so many, you know, parts of, of life, whether it's, you know, technology or, you know, gaming or, you know, culture and media that that sure. we can unite on. But it, there are even things even more fundamental than that. You know, we, we all want to be respected. We all want to be valued. We all want to, to love. We all, uh, we all want the best for our families. We all want opportunities to grow and achieve. I mean, this is the human condition. And I think in America, we need to remember that we, we are floating in space together and we exist on one part of this rock together that we share whether we like it or not mm -hmm. and we um we share a human conditions we condition we want uh ultimately the most important things in life that we want those are the, th the most important things that other people want and so uh when all else fails i firmly believe that we can build uh on common ground in in that regard and, and then i think we can build on common ground most of us on values not all of us i'm sad to say but most of us can build on common uh, common ground related to our values but um you know the, the just the big point is i i think we're headed into a time in this country where we're going to need to work on reconciliation now uh, I want to be clear that that people who have been who have uh, enabled, uh, you know, directly participated in in Trump's attacks on our republic, whether they be in the White House or in Congress, I think there are people who need to be held accountable. Um, mm -hmm. our, our leaders, what I'm is what I'm saying, but right. but for most Americans, it's time for reconciliation, and and we can do that through building on common ground as as human beings and as Americans. 
Evan, I could not have said that any better myself. So whether it's through policy, a book, office, whatever it is, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens from you for you in the future. So thank you so much for your time. And whenever you make your next big announcement, make sure it's not at the Four Seasons. All right. Sounds good. Darren, thanks a lot. Um, pleasure talking to you. And I hope we get to do it again. Likewise, Evan. Have a great rest of the day. Take care. Take Bye -bye. care. Outrocast.